Welcome at Movies That Matter and welcome at this Q&A session with director Ivan Igic about his film Oasis. You've all seen this film just now and you've realized and experienced how powerful and also at the same time touching and beautiful it is. My name is Dana Linsen. I'm a film critic from the Netherlands. Ivan, welcome. We're really glad to have you here. How are you? Hi, uh, I'm glad you're having me there. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, this time over the internet, but maybe sometimes in future in the, with my presence. We hope, we hope that too, very much. Um, you're calling in from, from Belgrade, I think? Yes, um, from Belgrade, Serbia. Um, yeah, could you introduce yourself? A little bit to our audience. You're a filmmaker. This is your second film. Yes, it's my second film, and uh, I'm a filmmaker uh, for I don't know, 20 years <laughs> almost. Like, uh, and the first feature uh, was Barbarians, and it was seen on a lot of festivals. And uh, Oasis is my second feature, which is now. Uh, screening at your festival. So we're going to talk about the context of the film and the filmmaking process because that's also quite unique and then of course we will eventually end up talking about um, issues like self-determination of people with a disability and also self-representation um, yeah. of people with a disability. Uh, you just mentioned barbarians and maybe it's good for the for the context actually also this film, if you could say a few words about that film first, because you more or less worked in a similar way. Is that correct? Uh, not really. Uh, I, I did Barbarians as a, as a film, which is uh, some kind, uh, uh, somehow connected with myself and, uh, and my uh, own growing up and uh, the 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 feeling of uh, uh, losing the 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 how to say uh, losing the virginity of youth age you know <laughs> and now this is something completely different from my point of view and it's not based on the real characters or it's not. Uh, based on the, uh, uh, some stories which are from the, taken from the reality. It's a fiction which is somehow based on some facts, but it's mostly fiction I wrote before the, the shooting. And the characters in the film are, yes, real residents of institution, like the one in the film, but they're not playing themselves. So it's uh, also the, the part uh, where the fiction, where the reality becomes a fiction, you know, because they playing a fictional characters, which think, are not much similar to them in real life. No, I think that's a very important nuance um, to to point out. To in, in barbarians, you had people more or less playing themselves, um, but. Let me um, correct myself. You like to work with real people. Yes, I, I I like the the process of teaching someone to act, you know, or to find that acting skills in them, you know, to help them to express themselves through the acting. So uh, I really enjoy in the process, which is far behind the shooting where we are like doing the workshops where we improvising where we working on a characters and uh, that's uh, i mean equally important for my work as the as the shooting itself so, uh, the, this is kind of uh, movie making which is a uh, really tough for the people who are working with me because there is not much, uh, uh, let's say, points where you can rely on very uh, certain things, you know, it's very unknown 
uh, process without uh, uh, without clear uh, clear marks when where, where it's uh, where it starts and wh when it's gonna end, you know. <laughs> so it's like uh, open uh, open uh, like uh, space for the for the movie making. So the people that work with you may be entering on this unknown territory and maybe you yourself as well, as you just described this unknown territory. But in fact, um, the world of these institutions for people with a disability or special needs is not or was not unknown to you when you started to make this film because you worked as a filmmaker in one of them as a student. Yeah, I, I worked actually in the same one where we shot the film a long time ago. And as a student, I, I, I shot one documentary uh, there and I spent a lot of time. And then I found, when I shoot the documentary, I found, uh, let's say, basis for the story which is now in Oasis and that's the story about two girls in love with the same guy and the institution who is trying to separate them because they are producing much trouble for the management you know so ba basic idea comes from there but everything else was fictionalized later and uh, I just used my own experience in the institution, uh, like the one in the film, to 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 uh, make the the story more uh, truthful, in a way. So yeah, that helps a lot. But I mean, uh, also it uh, it gives me a, a good insight in the life of the people like the ones in the film. Yeah. So, yes, you made a fictional story that takes place in, in, in this institute. It's, uh, I think it's outside of Belgrade. Is it? Yeah, it's outside of Belgrade, not far away. And it's the same institute still as the one that we see in the archival footage. Uh, yes, it's the same institution. We, we found the archive footage, footage during the shooting of the film. Uh, they were renovating one of the pavilions and they, uh, the, the residents found it uh, in a garbage from, the, from that ceiling, you know. And they bring it to us and they said, there is something on the rules. There is something, it's a, like film or what is it? And we took it and we said, okay, we're gonna do telekino and see what's under 16 millimeter rolls. And we did a telekino and found the two uh, promotional uh, rolls or film uh, made in, in early seventies when the institution was open. And uh, when we watched that, that footage, we were like very stunned by the pictures and the uh, narration and the optimism which comes from the from those uh, from those reels of 16 millimeter films. So we liked the idea to confront them to the film itself, a film we are actually filming and to use it as a kind of prologue for the story. And somehow we put it on the, in the editing room and it worked and we liked the, how it worked. So actually that footage find its own place in the film, probably without our will, <laughs> but on some transcendental level it worked and uh, we, 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 we we put it uh, like, like that uh, until the, the final cut. Because the optimism that was there in, the, in those promo films and this idea to empower people to um, become part of an inclusive society um, and, and raised to a level of independence, that is not exactly 
what we see in this flash forward into this future that is your film where the circumstances are less colorful and optimistic to say the least. I must say it reflects uh, the whole, uh, the whole, let's say, uh, whole life, our whole life in in my country, because uh, like the, the the footage is from 70s, and it reflects the state of mind of those period when the, the modernization process was ongoing. You know, the people felt that that they can change not only the the circumstances around them, but they can improve the life of all people uh, to the uh, level of uh, uh, unclass society and also society where everyone will find its place safely. And uh, it reflects also the, uh, the, 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 let's say, state of of the my state of mind of the people who lived in Yugoslavia in those times, and it was socialist country, and uh, one of the few in the Europe in that time, which is uh, actually reflects the idea which socialism bring with itself. When the transition to to capitalism. Uh, come in early 2000s actually uh, you can see the reflection of those uh, political change into the this institution of course uh, because it represents the society in whole so since uh, it, it was much more based of the well-being of the people uh, with special needs in the in the past and now it's just floating lost in the time where people are spending their life sentences until they die in the institution because there is no hope for them to be the part of the society oh that's an, that's i guess that's a very important additional layer um, to the film. When you started to develop this story about Maria and Robert and Dragana, um, were you al already having these things in mind or was your first interest also the position of people with a, an intellectual disability in, uh, in Serbia? First I have on mind was the love story actually and how to, I mean uh, the the, the melodrama of the film, uh, it's uh, always subversive, you know. Uh, melodrama itself as a genre is uh, very subversive because uh, the society is trying to, to separate the lovers, which means the, if the love, uh, if the love survives until the, until the end, then the 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 separation force and the society, force of society need to be uh, completely uh, or either broken or redefined. So uh, that was my first thing. But of course, I as much as I spend a lot of time there, the my main personal uh, emotion was that people are there from their childhood to the end of their life without any kind of perspective. And they are very aware of it. They are not unaware, you know. They are very aware and they cannot uh, change anything in their life without help from the outside world. And because nobody cares what they say, literally. <laughs> which is quite the opposite from what it was intended to be in the early 70s. When yes, it... yeah, yeah. But uh, I mean, uh, that's how... I mean, it's very uh, interesting that you have the movement of, uh, let's say, uh, empowering people from... Uh, many other let's say uh, minority groups 
but you never have uh, the, 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 the movements for the people, for empowering the people from, with uh, mental disability or intellectual disability. And that's uh, very, let's say, uh, strange. I, that's a very light word, strange, <laughs> or it's very intentional. And I, I, I think it's very, ideology works there very much because it's not that uh, popular for the for the manipulation of the broader spectrum of uh, intellectuals, you know. Uh, if you, I mean, nobody really, really care and you can see it. And maybe in five or 10 years, it becomes wider topic, but how many people will stay uh, outside of the society until then you know what i say in that in activism there is a fashion you know as you can uh, guess you know that some 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 minority groups are more valuable for the uh, for the for the exploitation in the uh, ideology uh, than uh, ideological exploitation than the people with intellectual disability where nobody literally care for them you know so we have you to... can see very few very very few uh, non uh, ngos dealing with it or like you cannot see any kind of uh, uh, let's say it's uh, programs of inclusion in broader sense you know and the lo uh, the learning process is for the people with intellectual disabilities, schools, it's and the uh, and the other things like connected with their uh, with their uh, learning, uh, it's much. Uh, I mean, it's very old-fashioned, and they did not uh, develop. Like it's very undeveloped. Yeah, so we have uh, and I can I can give my example because when I went to this kind of institution uh, from the film, nobody literally could imagine that the, those people could act in the film. Now we get to my question because and nobody ever tried, you know. <laughs> To and give them the chance to act, you know. And of course, I mean, we really have to thank you for for bringing this issue um, to this to this bigger film stage. And um, now we are all curious: How did you uh, work with the three young uh, actors, uh, Mariana Novakov and Valentino Tenuti and Tiana Markovic, who portray uh, Maria, Robert, and, and Dragana? Um, you already mentioned a little bit you were doing workshops. Um, I, I mean, I did what the most of the actors doing preparing for the role, you know, it's not some kind of alchemy, you know, that <laughs> there is something uh, which is not yet discovered in the process of uh, uh, training the actors and so on. It's bases which are like... Uh, hundred years old like you can read everything in Stanislavski which was beginning of the 20th century it's uh, you just uh, learned how to apply it to the modern world and to the uh, different people you know and you just experiment with it you know so like playing the roles it's if you can find it in yourself those emotions you need to express, that's it, you know, it's just that, you know, find the emotions in yourself and express it in front of the camera. That's the principle, you know, but uh, the steps are very uh, slow and uh, it takes a lot of time and patience because, I mean, uh, you are do, uh, working with the people who are told, told from the 
early childhood, they are not capable of doing, doing anything. So their uh, self-esteem is on very low level and you need to build it from the beginning, you know, because they, 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 they just don't believe that they can do such a thing, you know, and you need to encourage them. And when you break that uh, barrier, you know, and when they're free, they're, 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 when they feel that, that they're capable of uh, doing it and that uh, it, they feel that, that they, 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 they're expressing something and uh, after the scene, they, they are like very satisfied how they did it, you know, because they didn't believe that they can act that out of themselves, you know. Uh, suddenly you got better and better results. But this kind of filmmaking, it's also uh, very strange because it's, you cannot apply the regular uh, rules of production to this kind of film because you need to break every rule of production, you know, every rule of scheduling film, every rule of the how the film crew works so you need to reinvent filmmaking and we really enjoyed it, it not making on the very in conventional way so like we break every rule of filmmaking and that's the only how this film could uh, work out at the same time um, I think it's always good as a filmmaker to reinvent the rules of filmmaking because in a way that that way you create every film according to its own um, rules. Um, I'm wondering how in, in the working with the actors because the film touches on some really sensitive uh, subjects, uh, having the right to your own eroticism and your own sexual life and experience, um, but at the same time also the, the depression and the tension that finds a way in forms of self-harm, um, which are already subjects that are um, hard for any actor to, to play, but especially when you can't discuss them too much on a cognitive level, um, how and it's close at least to whether it be their experience or the experience that your actress saw around them. How did you, I don't know, work with them on those sensitive subjects? I mean, um, I mean, yeah, when you watch it from the outside, it looks like there is something, I don't know, sensitive and so on but for them it's every day you know they, they saw that scenes every day i mean it's not something uh very how to say very unusual you know if you're talking with them uh, they, they they they're they, they're living in the the institution is much harder than anything you see in the film you know the, the, the way they are dealing with their own uh, uh, isolation is much harder emotion for them than self-cutting. I mean, they're watching self-cutting most of their life. I mean, it's very inst institutional thing, you know. And uh, yeah, and I mean, I found uh, that... Uh, that uh, they, uh, all main characters actually feel very, how to say, uh, uh, very uh, convenient uh, with playing uh, that roles. I was more concerned about, okay, they are playing the lovers in the film, so it there, there need to be some emotions between them you, you need to see it in the eyes and the, how they behave you know because and actually the two main characters uh, Valentino and uh, Mariana 
they are not in the very good like on the personal level they're fighting all the time you know and they don't like themselves uh, i mean each other's in the in the real life actually <laughs> so i was more concerned about that you know <laughs> because it could suddenly look uh, uh, unconvincing at the end. why you also have these little fight scenes um, between them early in the film because it's yes 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 but, uh, but that's like that was much e easy for them to play uh, like the love scenes would like uh, the glances the um, that uh, very intimate scenes where they are together like that was much more uh, much harder to do because uh, I, I know that they need to f completely transcend their uh, real life stories and real life relation. So, yeah, but in the same times we have between the two girls in the film, they are in real life, they were uh, roommates for the whole life. And they are in very good, like on the personal level, they are very close. And to play the competition for the same boy and to fight through the film that was also some kind of you know uh, hard goal to make on the level of, uh, uh, of affecting so it was not easy like for that but for the those things uh, the people outside see as a sensitive part that was mostly easiest for for us so what was the hardest part uh, hardest part part was to convince the audience that uh, Maria and Robert are in love, <laughs> because in the real life they are really like you know fighting all the time, you know. Well, you managed to convince the audience, so I think mission succeeded. We we already talked a little bit about, of course. Um, self-representation and self-determination of people with an intellectual disability. Have your ideas about this changed during all the time that you, when you worked there as a filmmaker, as a student, when you started to write the film and when you returned to, to make Oasis? Um, have your ideas changed and in what way? Uh, idea about filmmaking or about, about self-determination of self-determination uh, I don't think so uh, like for the years I had the same uh, same idea which was expressed in the film like and nothing more changed I mean I, I on the personal level I, I believe in all of them from the beginning and probably they believe in myself since the beginning otherwise we will not make this film happen you know and that's the common trust we made and uh, which gives the results and uh, uh, on the personal level i learn a lot about the the about the about the, 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 the thing that they're, uh, the, the, that it's a small things you can change in their lives and uh, they can feel completely differently. For example, you always searching for the master solution. And of course, it's a long way for the master solution for this kind of, the, the problems are huge there. I mean, every person you met in the institution, there is a 300, 300 of them living in the institution. I mean, every story is a drama itself, you know, and very, well, usually very sad. But on the other level, it knows to be very, uh, uh, very uh, warm place where people are still having some kind of uh, uh, connection, which is unusual in uh, outside of outside world. That the they they, they be having very 
uh, open and without the, 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 without the mask, without subtext, you know, they were straightforward, you know, straightforward emotions, straightforward uh, answers, straightforward questions. That's what I like the most and it changed the way how I percept the world outside. So I feel that we lost that sense of truthfulness or uh, or uh, let's say the, the 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 that we are we, uh, immediately after we leave the institution we start to play the roles and there are not roles inside of the one so you already talked a little bit before about how being more inclusive when it comes to people with special needs that it's not really high on the agenda in in or high on the political agenda in 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 serbia um we have these discussions of course also here in the in the netherlands um how were the response but everywhere is in background i don't see yeah. it's it's uh, it's po it's not popular uh, topic anywhere in the world it's, it's i mean it's much better better probably in Netherlands to be like person with special need or intellectual disability and you have more opportunities life probably but not much more I would say so yeah I'm I'm really would like to ask you how were the responses in Serbia on your film um, because it premiered last year in Venice and then it played in, in Sarajevo um, and did that change anything did that kind of spark a debate it's not yet screening but uh, in the serbia it should be uh, premiered next month if uh, everything goes well with the pandemic so yeah uh, it's postponed twice the, the 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 premiere is postponed twice and uh, i expect to happen in may in Belgrade. Okay, so <laughs> I need to invite you back um, because we also hope that after movies that matter, of course, this film will screen on, on some more screens in the in the Netherlands. So then we can have. This I hope so. Again, especially and because Netherlands had a very uh, important role in this project, and we have like very and the part of the film is made in the Netherlands. So like post-production and so on. So like, I hope it will screen in the theaters. <laughs> so maybe it will be kind of a parallel premiere in Belgrade and in, in the Netherlands when cinemas hopefully open up again at some point this spring or early summer. Um, Ivan, I would really like to thank you for being with us and, and talking about your film. Um, thank you for your invitation. And, an opportunity to talk and i would yeah i'd like to encourage our movies that matter audience to check the website um and have a look at uh, all the other important and um, thought-provoking films and programs and context programs and talks that are um, being programmed at the movies that matter film festival this year thank you very thank much thank you very much <laughs>